Good evening and welcome to TL Physics and today I'm going to talk about Coulomb's Law. So Coulomb's Law is a way of quantifying the force between two radial charges. So if I had two objects here with charge in them, this one is generating electric field, this one is generating electric field, and they're going to interact. And this one is either going to attract this one, or it is going to repel it, okay? And I can quantify this force using Coulomb's law. Now, Coulomb's law is defined as this equation here. That the force felt between two objects is 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, the charge of one of them, the charge of the other, divided by r squared. To put it in words, the force is proportional to the product of the charges per the distance between them squared. So force is proportional to the product of the charges per, this is that number divided, the distance between them squared. And this is one, something you must remember to write when you're writing Coulomb's law. Now this constant here, this 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, is all to do with gravi um, gravitational electric field lines. This value of epsilon naught, okay, is known as the permittivity of free space. And you can find it on your data sheet. So this here is, where is it here? 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 farads per meter. And what this letter is representing is the ability for electric field lines to be made in the air. And this will come up more importantly in capacitance when we talk about making it easier for electric field lines to be made when we talk about relative permittivity. So here, the permittivity of free space is this letter here. I'm going to use this here with the example that I've got. So I've got a 3 nanocoulomb charge and I have a minus 2 nanocoulomb charge at 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 metres away. And I've got the same charge but a little bit further away and we're going to talk about the forces there. Okay? So I'm going to work out my force at A. I'm going to use this formula. So A... I've got F equals 1 over 4 pi times by 8.85 times 10 to the minus 12 times by 3 times 10 to the minus 9 times by minus 2 times 10 to the minus 9 all over 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 and that is squared. So I'm going to work out this bit first. Okay, so 4 times pi, whoops, 4 times pi times 8.85 to the minus 12. Over there. This bit here is 8.99-ish. It's approximately 8.99 times 10 to the 9 farad, um, per farad meter. Okay? Some people will just remember that. Sometimes you'll need to calculate it. Okay? So, 8.99 times 10 to the 9, times by 3 times 10 to the minus 9, times 2 times 10 to the minus 9, divided by 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. I get an answer for my force of 0 0.01 newtons. Now, I'm going to do the same again for B. So, oh, more importantly, it's a minus sign. I'll talk about this in a minute because I've got two charges here. I've got a plus charge and a minus charge. So I'm going to do this again. So I'm going to use 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, so 8.99 times 10 to the 9, times 
times y3 times 10 to the minus 9 times y minus 2 times 10 to the minus 9 all over 2.7 times 10 to the minus 3 squared. I get an answer of minus snort point nor nor seven four newtons. Now, this negative sign is important. This negative sign shows me it is an attractive force. Because what it means is that I have measured my distance outwards this way, so this is my positive direction, but the force is going inwards. Also importantly, the further this is out here, the less force there is. And this will hark back to GCSE chemistry. It is much easier to take an electron from the outer shell than it is to take it from the inner shell. And that is because on the outer shell, it is further away from the positive nucleus, which means that it requires less force to actually take it out, which in turn requires it takes less energy to remove it from an electric field. So that there is the basics of Coulomb's law. In my next video, I'm going to talk about how to work out the resultant force in two very different situations.